brings you issues that affect our community, people behind the news, and information to start your week. Good morning, I am Greg Nieto. Thank you for joining us this morning on WB2 AM Sunday with the death of Christopher Reeves' widow this past week from lung cancer. Many want to know how this disease can kill someone so quickly when she never even smoked. Plus, living with ALS can be hard enough, but it's not enough for one man. He's doing his best to make sure others who also have that disease also can become someone as well known as baseball legend Lou Gehrig. And if you need a job or want to switch careers, here's your chance. The Urban League's annual career fair is coming up in just a few days. We have some tips for you to be ready to go. That's all next right here on AM Sunday. But first this morning on AM Sunday with the sudden death of Christopher Reeves widow Dana from lung cancer, a spotlight once again is on the deadly disease. Dr. Michael Parra is an oncologist with the Swedish Medical Center. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Greg. Again, I think initially everybody hears that news and we hear that she was never a smoker and yet she was afflicted with lung cancer. And I think it scares a lot of people to think, hey, I'm not a smoker. I too could become a victim. Uh, that's the ironic thing that patients that look perfectly normal can actually get lung cancer. Even young people like Dana Reeves. And you actually did some research yourself and she was in the spotlight a lot obviously the past couple of years because of her Superman so husband. The they leave a 13 year old behind and you see these pictures, recent pictures of her and she still looks fine even after she announced that she was going through this. It seems kind of impossible to believe. If anything, looking at her pictures during the newscast when she announced her disease, she looked healthier than anybody's ever seen her. Mm -hmm. I think that was very shocking to most people, but as it turns out, um, the, the news people actually reported that she was a uh, lounge singer for a long period of time, was actually exposed to cigarette smoking, probably secondhand for many years. You hear that a lot from folks that uh, are in favor of a smoking ban in the state and people will say, hey, I work in a bar, I'm a bartender, I'm a waitress or what have you, and I'm exposed to secondhand smoke, which is, uh, you know, not good for my health. I mean, is this an example? I think it's a good example. Um, most of the people that we're talking about that are in bars are young people. So it may be that there's a lot of cigarette smoking that's going on that other people are breathing in bars that potentially younger people are being exposed to. Therefore, we're seeing an increased risk of developing that in young people just like Dana Reeves. It didn't seem like it was that long in between when Dana first announced that she had lung cancer and when she passed away. Is it that common to, to go so quickly? It can. And the problem right now, Greg, is that we're finding patients at a very advanced stage of lung cancer at time of diagnosis. There's four stages of lung cancer, stage one, two, three, and four. The problem is most patients are being diagnosed with stage three and stage four disease, and those are very difficult to cure. Not too long ago, we were talking about Peter Jennings and the fact that he died from lung cancer, and he acknowledged that years ago he was a heavy smoker, and so for a lot of people, we see the correlation. Again, we talked with someone who, who passed away and, and was never a smoker. Nevertheless, two different cases, so to speak, but it does bring up awareness about lung cancer. Uh, is, as a society, are we becoming more educated about lung cancer? I think we are. In Peter Jennings' case, he was a well-known smoker for many, many years, and he had stopped. I think there's a common fallacy in our society that if you stop cigarette smoking, that your risk goes down. But the problem is, it still stays quite high for a number of many years. Some people think it's as long as 20 years after you stop cigarette smoking, wow. you can still have problems with increased risk of developing lung cancer. We go in, we get a yearly physical. Is there something that can be done to screen for lung cancer? No, that's one of the major research uh, areas that we're looking at in the United States right now, including at the uh, Comprehensive Lung Cancer Center at Swedish Hospital, trying to find lung cancer at early stages, stage one and stage two, instead of stage three and stage four. Is there a certain target audience or group that should be more worried about lung cancer than another? Well, I think that people actually that start smoking earlier in life um, actually have an increased risk because of the duration of time that they're exposed. Um, unfortunately, in the United States, we're seeing more younger women smoking than ever. Hmm. And our rates of lung cancer in young women for lung cancer deaths, especially, have actually gone up. And within a very short period of time, it would probably be the number one form of cancer killer um, worldwide within a period of about 20 years. Again, doctor, with that being said, there are people out there who, again, may have discounted lung cancer simply because they would say, I've never been a smoker, I shouldn't worry about it. Again, what do you say to those folks that feel they've done everything they can to avoid smoke, maybe even secondhand smoke, and yet now lung cancer is really out there in front of all of us? We know that chest x-rays are not really good screeners for lung cancer. They can miss a lot of small masses. So we have to actually find better ways of picking up the, the population of patients I think they're at risk. Um, people that are not exposed to secondhand cigarette smoking, we still see a certain small population of people that are getting lung cancer. They have actually no history of any exposure at all. 
So there's probably some genetics involved. We do know that African Americans and Native Hawaiians have a higher risk of developing lung cancer if they do smoke. There is some genetic difference in people who actually get lung cancer. What did Dana bring to the table with her battle? What did she bring to the forefront that perhaps no one really talked about before? I think the fact that young people, and 44-year-old in particular, can get lung cancer. You know, most of the patients that we end up seeing are in their age of 60s and 70s, as more common ages. A 44-year-old looks very young, looks very healthy. So there are more young people that I think are thinking about it. I think if you think about it, it's potentially something that you'll talk to your primary care physician more about, about symptoms such as cough or shortness of breath. The great majority of the time, people present with those symptoms. Um, but those are very indistinct symptoms. You need a good physician actually to look at you and help determine which is something to look at and which is something not. Again, doctors, is it something you can ask your doctor to do during a physical? Well, I think that um, letting your doctor know that you're having unusual symptoms, most of the time people actually feel different. Um, you can bet that, unfortunately, with the tumor that Dana Reeves had, she knew something was going on. She may not be able to figure out what, exactly what it was, but she probably could figure that something was happening. Okay, Dr. Michael Parra with Swedish Medical Center, we thank you for the knowledge this morning. Thank you. Sad story, but hopefully it'll have some long-lasting impact.